617 and time now for what's trending. Well, Andy, get this. A fugitive is on the run for 23 years. He may have once been spotted at a Dodgers game. Oh. The game was in 2016, but now the U.S. Marshals Service is asking for the public's help to ID this man in the blue shirt at the game. You can see the man near the batter's head, and they believe it may have been John Rufo, who was convicted of a $350 million bank fraud scheme. Wow. Rufo never showed up to serve a 17-year pr prison sentence. In a Investigators say Rufo is likely using a different name and is a master manipulator who enjoys fine wine and expensive hotels. There's now a $25,000 reward for information leading to his arrest. <laughs> I just can't with people. I don't know what is wrong with people. I mean, why would you go to a game? Enjoy yourself, not just going to a game, but you went to the game and you sat in the front rows, okay? And you're, you're wanted for... All of that. I mean, I guess if you got that amount of money, maybe you wouldn't want cheap tickets either, but. Yeah, he definitely sounds like a man that likes to roll the dice. I mean, being right. front and center on the center stage and after kind of knowing everything he's done, I think it's kind of a, a risky move there to make. Right. But, you know, he seems like a risk taker type. I don't know if you're likes committing that. Likes the fine sort of things in life, but clearly <laughs> fine wine, expensive hotels, front row seats at Dodgers games. Mm -hmm. I mean. Shoot, that sounds nice, but I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to go out like that, man. Like, <laughs> but I guess if you know you're wanted, live it up while you're on the so. other side of it. I don't know. It's coming short, so I hope he enjoyed that game. Yeah, no, uh, no kidding. Well, <laughs> let's take a little bit of a turn here from the Dodgers game to a group of tourists. Mm -hmm. uh, there was they spotted a bear and two cubs on the road as they were driving in northern Japan. The driver honked and stopped immediately, and as the adult bear charged forward and tried to climb in the hood, the passenger said he was frightened that. The the bear might break the glass. The animal backed off right away and the trio disappeared into the woods. And Wait, look, uh, did you see there. this video? <laughs> yeah, it's... did you see it charge at the car? Oh my gosh, yeah, it's like it just it's oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is awful. I would have been terrible. Oh, look at it. it. Oh, it was mad. It probably just thought that the Cubs or that the car was going to like harm the Cubs, though. Yeah, I think that's really where they get kind of triggered, so to say, is right. with the Cubs. And I think that's like, you know, any sort of, uh, you know, parental figure over the babies and the Cubs yeah. and, you know, other things and such that there is that kind of stay away yeah, from my babies. Stay away. Yeah. yeah. The, but there is something about bear. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good freezing moment. Sorry, oh I just goodness. died. Um, so, uh, what was I even going to say? That threw me off the little frame picture of the bear. Just, what you do? I think you're going to do your bear impression jumping. Uh, no, uh, I don't think the people want to see that. Uh, man, that that okay. would be scary. Uh, <laughs> but the no, but on. yeah, there's just something about mama bears, though. They mm -hmm. are always just like intensely protective. Definitely. Um, have, have you seen a good bit up here? You know, I really haven't, and that's been something I've been looking forward to. I see deer all the time. There's tons of deer. And, I don't you know, get but it. No, the first. First, maybe five, six months I was here, mm -hmm. I saw like about three. What? Yeah. Three? Three. In Rhinelander? Where were you? In, well, in, yeah, in Rhinelander. Wow, okay. And so one, um, I was actually, my mom was still here. We were going on the way to Wausau mm -hmm. and it just won. I don't know if it was a cub because it wasn't small. And it just crossed the highway, just uh, ran out of nowhere, broad daylight. I'm like, well, that's great. <laughs> and then the second time, a little cub was rummaging in our um, trash. Oh. Yeah. But I was nervous because I'm like, okay, well, if the cub's over here, then mama's somewhere. So right, right. I just stayed indoors. Probably a smart move there. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, those definitely baby cubs. smart there. <laughs> well, uh, something else I guess that maybe a, a little smart. I, I don't know. Let's see. The man who composed the music for the Broadway play Cats has plenty to say about the 2019 film adaptation of his work, and it's not good. Tony Grammy and uh, Academy Award-winning composer Andrew Lloyd. Weber told Variety the film was so bad it made him buy a dog. Weber oh. jokes that the film left him emotionally damaged enough to get his um, Havanese uh, declared a therapy dog by an unnamed airline. According to Weber, when the airline asked for proof the dog was needed, his response instructed them to look at what Hollywood did to his <laughs> musical. Weber says he then got an approval with a note reading, no doctor's report required. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jeez, he was going pretty deep to get that dog there but I mean you know therapy dogs of course are amazing any dog's great um, mm -hmm. but that's really funny that he got driven so crazy he had to get a dog
dog. Well, it sounds like there were really some deep emotions in there. Number one, being you know upset yeah. with how the rendition came out, and just the whole you know, and then the whole kind of uh, back and forth with the dog. It just right. it sounds you know all just you know a little too rattling. Yeah, but. I don't know about that. Well, I hope he's happy with the dog. <laughs> I hope so too. And you know, today 